In this lesson video, we will be learning about linear functions in slope-intercept form. This is basically a review of Algebra 1 slope-intercept form lessons. Our objectives are we can graph linear equations and we can also write equations of lines. So let's begin by talking about what slope means. Slope of a non-vertical line is the ratio or the fraction of change in the y-coordinates over change in the x-coordinates. And to denote that, we use a triangle for the change in, for change in y over change in x. So you can see the format right there. And then graphically, we have a line right there, and you can see the vertical change would be the change in y, and the horizontal change would be the change in x. And you can see that this concept is discussed further in the take note concept, key concept box below. So the slope of a non-vertical line through points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is the ratio of the vertical change to the corresponding horizontal change. So hopefully you remember this equation. We use this a lot in Algebra 1, and we use m for the variable for slope. The equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and remember we cannot have 0 in the denominator, so that means x2 minus x1 cannot equal 0. In example one, we're going to have three different pairs of coordinate points, and we're going to learn how to find the slope of the line that passes through each of those points. In example one, we have three pairs of coordinate points. Let's focus on the first pair in part A. Negative 3, 7, and negative 2, 4. I labeled them x1, y1, and x2, y2. We typically label the points in order of how we read them. So let's take those coordinate points and find the slope of the line that passes through those two points. So we have the equation, as we discussed previously, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 4 minus 7 over negative 2 minus a negative 3. So make sure you have that double negative below. The first negative or minus sign in the middle is from the equation and then the other negative is from the coordinate point. So on top we have negative 3 and on bottom we have positive 1 when we reduce. So the slope of the line that passes through these two points is negative 3 over 1, or in reduced form it would just be negative 3. For part B, we have the coordinates 3, 1, and negative 4, 1. So I immediately labeled underneath x1, y1, and x2, y2. From there, we're going to use the same equation. So I'm going to substitute in the y2 minus y1, 1 minus 1, over negative 4, x2 minus 3x1. On top we get 0, and on bottom we get negative 7. That reduces to 0. 0 divided by any number besides itself is 0. So the slope of this line that passes through the points 3, 1, and negative 4, 1 is equal to 0. For part C, we have the coordinate 7, negative 3, and 7, positive 1. So I labeled them x1, y1, x2, y2, as we did before, and then substituted those values in for the slope formula. You can see up top we get 1 plus 3, which is 4, and 7 minus 7 is 0. So when we divide by 0, that division by 0 is undefined, so that means the slope is also undefined for this line that passes through these two coordinate points. Take a look at this take note concept summary box below. This will really help you remember the difference between positive, negative, zero, and undefined slope. And make sure when you're looking at graphs that you look at it from left to right, just like when you're reading a book. So positive slope, the line rises from left to right. Negative slope, the line falls from left to right. Zero slope, we have a horizontal line. And undefined slope, we have a vertical line. So above, in example one, the first example would have a negative slope. So that means the graph would be falling from left to right. The middle example had a zero slope. So that means that this slope was that of a horizontal line. And the last one had an undefined slope, so that means we had a vertical line. Now, often in the past, I have seen people get the undefined and zero slope 
confused which one's horizontal, which one's vertical. So this is the acronym that I found online and I've been passing on to my kids for the past several years. So I encourage you to write this acronym down, HOIVUX on the side. Horizontal line has zero slope and the equation of a horizontal line is y equals some number. And then for a vertical line, we have undefined slope. And a vertical line always has its equation start with the variable x, x equals some number. So hopefully that helps you remember the difference between horizontal and vertical lines. A linear function is a function whose graph is a line and it is represented by a linear equation. For example, the equation y equals 1 half x minus 2. A solution is any ordered pair in the form x, y that makes the equation true. So any ordered pair that you can plug in for the equation that it makes the equation satisfied or true, that would be a solution for that equation. The first form of a linear function that we're going to be studying is that of slope-intercept form. And I believe this is the form that most students are most comfortable with. So look at the equation below. It is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope of that line, and b is the y-intercept. So you can see at the graph at right, we have the y-intercept at negative 2, so b equals negative 2, and then the slope of this line, you could start at the negative 2, you would rise 2 units and run 4 units, so that means the slope would be 2 over 4, change in y over change in x, and that reduces to 1 half. So the equation would actually be the example equation that I showed you just a minute ago, y equals 1 half x minus 2, because you would plug in the m and the b for the slope-intercept form. Before we do an example where we have to find the equation of a line, let's talk about what intercepts are. I'm pretty sure you understand what those are, but I just want to make sure everybody has the same understanding. So an intercept is a point where a line crosses an axis. So you can see on that graph at right that they are labeled. The x-intercept of a non-vertical line is the point at which the line crosses the x-axis. So in the example above, the x-intercept would be positive 4. And for a y-intercept, a y-intercept is a point at which the line crosses the y-axis. So in the graph above, that would be negative 2. For slope-intercept form, we do not directly deal with x-intercepts, but for the slope-intercept, we do use y-intercepts. In the next video, we will learn standard form, which we do use the concept of the x-intercepts. In example two, we have two parts where we need to determine what the equation of each line is. In part A, we're given the slope, m equals 1 fifth, and the y-intercept, 0, negative 3. The y-intercept is the point at which x equals 0, so we know that b is equal to negative 3. From there, I color-coded it so we can easily see what number goes in what position of the slope-intercept form. I substitute in 1 fifth for m and negative 3 for b. You can see that there's a plus and minus next to each other, and when you add a negative, you're essentially subtracting. So the equation in slope-intercept form would be y equals 1 fifth x minus 3. For part b, we're given the graph for this function, and I immediately found out that the y-intercept is at 4. You can see I marked it with the blue dot, so that means our b value is 4. For the slope, there's two different ways you can do this. You can visually just count down and over for rise over run, or you could use the slope formula that we discussed earlier to find that slope. To use that slope formula equation, I use the coordinate point for the y-intercept, 0, 4, and the other point that's marked on the graph, 1, 1, and then I found out that the slope is negative 3. So the equation for this graph is y equals negative 3x plus 4, and that's in slope-intercept form. 
In example three, we are going to learn how to rewrite a linear equation in slope-intercept form by solving for y. Remember, solving for a variable means doing whatever it takes, the opposite operations, such that we can get the y all by itself on one side of the equation. So in example one, we have 5x, or sorry, example a, we have 5x minus 4y equals 16. First thing I would like to do is move the 5x over the other side by subtraction. We have negative 4y equals negative 5x plus 16. From there, we're going to divide by negative 4 to both sides. And remember, we're sharing that negative 4 with the negative 5x and the positive 16. So we have negative 5x over negative 4 and 16 over negative 4. That reduces to 5 fourths x minus 4. So that equation is in slope-intercept form, and the slope is 5 fourths, and the b, or the y-intercept, is negative 4. In part b, we have the equation negative 3 fourths x plus 1 half y equals negative 1. Again, we want to isolate or solve for y, so the first thing that I did was add 3 fourths x to both sides. So that means we have 1 half y equals 3 fourths x minus 1. From there, we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. So let's multiply both sides by 2 to get the y all by itself. On the left side, the 2 and the 1 half cancel because when you multiply, you get positive 1. So y is by itself now. Now remember, the 2 needs to be distributed to both terms. So we have 3 fourths x times 2 over 1. And then we also have 1 times 2. And negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So when we simplify and multiply, we get 6 fourths x minus 2, and that reduces to y equals 3 halves x minus 2. That is our slope-intercept form, where 3 halves is our slope and negative 2 is our y-intercept. So in the coordinate form, it would be 0, negative 2. In example 4, we have the equation negative 2x plus y equals 1. Notice that this equation is not in slope-intercept form, so the very first thing that we want to do is make it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to rewrite negative 2x plus y equals 1, and fortunately this one only requires one step to get the y by itself, so y equals 2x plus 1, where 2 is the slope and a positive 1 is the y-intercept. Once you have the equation in slope-intercept form and you know the slope and the y-intercept, you want to plot the y-intercept. Remember, we're going on the y-axis, so the point is at 0, 1. And now we can use the slope to find a second point. So we know that the slope is positive 2. And remember, if you don't have a number on the bottom of the slope, you can always write a 1. So the slope is 2 over 1. Remember, slope is rise over run, so that means we can start at the y-intercept and count up two units and write one unit. So that is our next point. Once you have that second point plotted, you can draw a line through the two points to connect those and make sure you put arrows at the end. This is the basic process for graphing a line in slope-intercept form. Here's our lesson check problems for section 2.3. Make sure you write them down, complete them, and let me know if you have any questions the next time we see each other.